Welcome back fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of, you guessed it, Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 9.11 and we're playing as Germany this time. Man, you guys are good guessers, aren't you? Okay, well let's continue this. We're nearing the first of the month, so a lot of events will be happening and um, I want to thank again everyone who um, has been liking the videos it's really been helping out and if you would be so kind please take the time to like it and them again okay these guys are here they're coming there um they're coming there okay we'll wait just a little bit but you let's see if we can get you over here I don't know what your organization is like. Oh, your organization is good at just having a bit of supply problems. Ah, yes, I sent a bunch more transports down here, and some are still maybe coming. I wanted to see about loading you on board. Okay. And, no, not you. Oh, okay. They're not enough free. Got it. Okay, uh, good, first of the month. Okay, African Army recruitment has advanced now. Um, you can get on board. Oh, no, 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 no. You get off, we're not, we don't want you on that. Okay, what we wanna do then, I guess, is they're supplying. They're just sitting here, so let's get you off temporarily. I th since they don't want to held three, this one, I'm guessing if we were to remove one from here, yeah, Hans Kammler can have the, okay, and that's the 50th. Can have it for the hour. Okay, there we go. Now. Okay, good. One with no order. And. Also, okay, there we go. Now, got both of these guys loaded up there. We're not going to keep them there. They're there. And can we get the 7th Flieger Division on board? Yes. Yay. Good. Because I'm thinking we're going to do, um, pull some of your core. Where are you? I'm located. Oh, you're also an Aiden. Oh, well, um, you can get on board too, can't you? Wow, okay, good. Um, hmm, let's unattach you. And we have here Kleist, Panzergruppe Kleist. Oh, I guess we gotta do it this way, I guess. Okay. Let's attach you to. Oh, um. You have a few other units here which are too far away, I don't really care about right now. I mean, I care about them, but they're not the ones I'm. Getting ready to move. Rebase to there.
Goring has been demanding more use of his Falschmjäger, so we're going to see about um, using them as part of the invasion of Ceylon. Okay, we would give them money for rare materials. No, not, not across the Atlantic. And we have enough supplies at the moment, so... Well, let's do just a little more than needed. Oh, come on. There we go. There we go. We're already having supply problems up here, as we can see. Okay, um... Yeah. There we go. Now, how are we doing back here in Africa? Oh, good. They're all here. Attack. How is your attack doing? Oh. Um. Supply for Ash. Let's go ahead. Um. Yeah, break out of partisans there. Defense research report. Excellent. Minor breakthrough. Good. Okay, raise flak units to protect aircraft industry. The strategic air offensive. Sorry, sorry. I'm just trying to get a little more comfortable. Um, against the German aircraft industry was um, imminent in June '43. Its aim was to defeat the Luftwaffe in the air, on the ground, and destroy its aviation industry to a degree. Sorry, I'm just looking at something else here to a degree that it could no longer pose a threat to the Allied invasion of the continent to protect the important production centers. Additional anti-aircraft batteries positioned were uh, positioned close proximity of our air industry as are necessary. Okay, so we can raise a bunch of flak units. Great. Manpower down by 10, which is fine. We've got uh, a modest amount at 560. Um, Metal and supplies, 10,000 supplies. Yeah, we can afford that. Um, okay, 7.5% until September. Um, okay, we'll do that. That was a somewhat close call for me. But yeah, let's do that. Um, there was destroyed in the park. Okay. Yes, spear coordinates our naval armament. After the loss of the Battle of Atlantic and following the lack of strategic orientation on how to continue the naval war, the Kriegsmarine gave up its autonomy for their armament and passed it on to the responsibility of Spears Reich Ministry for armament and war production in '43. Being favored by the new naval high commander, Carl Donitz, the focus of the German naval armament's production concentrated on submarines in order to keep high numbers of newly built U-boats incoming. Speer continued production of obsolete submarines and did not manage to achieve strategic relevant turn in the Reich's naval armament. However, production numbers in the U-boats rose significantly due to rationalization of production change and higher allocations of steel contingents for the Krieg for the Kriegsmarine. Okay, um let me take a drink here. Okay. 
I'm right now, uh, well, I've just read Japanese Destroyer Captain, um, which is a book written by oh, a Japanese destroyer captain. Um, oh, sorry, I'm blanking on the name right now. Um, Hirata, Hirata, I forget, but um, that was written, no, in the 50s, I think. I think it was published 58. Um, you know, so relatively shortly after the war. And um, he's talked about um, problems that at least he claims that he saw as they were happening. When this includes pre-war, during the war, whatnot. Um, you always have to take that with a, as a proverbial grain of salt because of um, it's written after the war and people justify things though he also blames himself for a bunch of tactical um, you know um, bad command decisions and you know not reacting fast enough on his you know as being a captain of his ship so I don't think it's some great glorification or justification of himself um But, you know, what, you know, I, I tend to believe some of his stuff because it doesn't seem to be, um, make him out to be a brilliant anything. It's just like, hey, these guys, you know, and they, they talk about it and it seems looking at it that, um, and it's sort of confirmed by, um, another book I'm reading on, um, the Pacific Naval War, but, um, how, you know, oh, uh, how the high command, Japanese high naval command wasn't in touch with um, the fleet operations, and they were, you know, making bad decisions and sort of rigid, not just bad decisions. That's sort of that's the wrong way I want to say rigid decis decisions. Oh, supply mission X worked. Well, we need to resupply the thing. Let's do the same supply mission again, and then again, and he. At the time, he, uh, and I think it somewhat backed up, um, and, you know, talks about how you should never, you know, Sun Tzu, and he, a big reader of Sun Tzu, should never repeat even a successful tactic, because um, the enemy will, will spot it. And so I, I'm believing some of his stuff, and then some of the stuff that he talks about is... Um, you know, some production elements and production things. And so, as a mod designer, because I am still working on stuff for Hearts of Iron 4, I haven't been too active in it recently, but it's still something that I want to do. Um, so I'm seeing problems with the Japanese stuff that at least some Japanese person at the time has realized wasn't working right. And so, you know, oh have an event at the start of the game or at some other point you know and when somebody's promoted to captain or whatever oh do you want better um a, uh production levels yes or no you know guess just to give the player a, a feeling of um interaction sense of control whatever and let's see, um, I think let's say 100% of the players are going to go, yes, I want that. I don't want to make stupid mistakes. Okay. Um, but then do you force on, conversely, when you have, and, I, and I'm trying to stay away from uh, complete sandboxes, you know, meaning... Um, we're not going to have um, Japan decide to build a, a, a Panzer army. I'm not just talking tank army. Panzer army, you know, like like, like the Germans did. Uh, what? No. Um, the player may want to do that, and if you want to play a sandbox, there's either, you know, standard Hearts of Iron 4 or other mods. And sure, but it's not a real... Not that you... Whether you build tanks, not that whether you have... Um, even some heavy tanks or, or whatever. I'm talking, you know, a panzer army, uh, you know, a highly mechanized... That's just not where Japan's head was at. Not, not in any of its military that I've seen 
you know, I'm not saying there again there wasn't some tank guy who who read, you know, little Liddell Hart and read Rommel and read Guderian and, and wanted a Panzer Army. I'm talking it wasn't where even the army's head was at and they don't have the industrial capacity to do that in Japan and if you were to say switch industrial capacity from Kriegsmarine to the army so that you could do it, uh, you know, oh yeah, we've got this great Panzer Army sitting in Japan and it can't go anywhere because we don't have any ships. You know, so somebody else can do the complete um, sandboxy thing, but do you need to make, you know, a player who studies things, how do you, um, uh, you know, how, how far do you straightjack them into history versus what they want to do, what ifs? So reasonable what ifs, I'm all for. Now, we can, you know, we'll look at this in just a second. Um, and so I'm looking at the new sort of event system that costs some political power and whatever. And I'm thinking that that, that may be some ways, plus um, still some random chance. You know, sp spear battles with, um, oh, um, oh, uh, Goering's um, toady, um, who was in charge of the four-year plan, I forget, or something, or spear beer battles with Gurren over control of the four-year plan, or, or whatever it might be, and sometimes spear would win, and sometimes Gurren would win, or whatever, and sort of make class, because I just don't want to have things that, oh, want better, want better um, X, and then you go, well, yes, sure, we're going to do that, but what this, again, tells me is you rose significantly due to rationalization of production chains chains also steel okay I mean, you know and that's steel is a um a finite resource so you know take it away from some somewhere else which could of course be taken away from surface fleet building um ships and put it into that so that's some of the things i look at but i also look at <laughs> you could build a lot better now these less good submarines, um, or submarines that aren't improved. Um, well, in a way, I always think, you know, um, no weapon is outdated, all weapons are useful, some are just more useful. You know, so... Are submarines useful? Yes. Sort of like, you know, well, what about outdated fighters? Well, you know what? If I had a hundred World War I fighters in good operating condition, you know what I would have done with something like that? Give them to the Germans who are occupying Yugoslavia. And you got all these things here. And use them for ground strafing. You know, partisans who, aren't, who don't have lots of... Um, Anti proper anti aircraft guns don't have you know you always can find some use for some weapons that you already have. Now, do you build a bunch of World War One fighters? Well, maybe because if you can, if you sort of have the steel and can build the cheap engine, and the rest wood wooden framed um, and you know uh, cloth aircraft would be cheap and easy to produce. So those would actually sort of kind of make good cheapo ground attack aircraft for fighting partisans in Yugoslavia and Greece and places like that. Um, so yeah, um, I might, you know, whether I make an exact World War One model or just something that's vaguely, vaguely like that. Submarines, it's a little different. Um, I, to the point is, as this is happening, it gets to trying to fight the Battle of North Atlantic becomes very counterproductive. The losses are not worth what they're sinking and just not worth it now. One thing I don't know is um, can those U-boats be used defensively effectively in the channel i would say no just because the enemy has way too much air power 
uh, control. So, and if you have enough air power control, you're sort of, you know, you don't sort of need the U-boat so much. But um, for like operations along Norway, that's such a big thing. And it's far enough away from enemy air power. Yeah. A little bit in the Baltic, a bit in the Black Sea. Yes, maybe some in the Mediterranean, especially if Italy's still alive. Yes, so, okay. Um, prepare a new U-boat offensive, U-boat building change, building technology. Okay, um, yeah, we'll do that. Create Fortress Ploetzti. Okay, manpower supplies officers. German air, okay, any aircraft. I wouldn't have done this if this was a percentage loss, but since it appears to be... Uh, thing. Okay, Schwer Panzer Abtilung 506. For some reason, in... I gotta look at it. Maybe it's still coming up. I thought it was supposed to have happened long before now. The one from TRE just hasn't fired. Okay, let's shift that and... Okay, now... Looking for a Panzer Commander, there we go. And what I also want to do is, which I've done for these guys here... Yeah, we well can come back to here, maybe you'll get better supply. Um, is add a uh, motor pioneer unit. Um, well, I got a few, but I think we're going to use them for other things. So let's build another one. They actually slow up the um, heavy tank units. Well, eight ICs for 14 days versus armored, which is... 18 ICs for an uh, Yeah, we're going to just do that. I'll actually slow up the unit some, but they really increase speed going across rivers and battling across rivers. They help a lot. I sort of decided to keep the sh both the SS and the German Schwer um, stuff maybe from becoming a division by adding infantry and whatever, sort of keeping their their basic style, but Adding in some engineers. Okay, now, are we all here? Okay, your garrison is coming. Well, it's getting supplies. Maybe not enough, but it's getting supplies. Supplies for Crete, not at this time. Okay, so we can make it there. I thought we could. Yeah, so we're winning against these guys. I guess you can attack there. It was like, um, one of the things reading about how 
the Japanese developed one of the best naval air arms. They yeah, just developed one of the best naval air arms of the war. And then had it destroyed. And they really didn't effectively plan a follow-on to that. And so the... And a lot of the, the air arm was destroyed, you know, the Battle of Midway, when the carriers were shot out from under them. So whether the fighters, um, the pilots, well, and they, to some degree they they valued the aircraft more than the pilots. Um, but it takes a long time, and the Japanese really worked really hard uh, and had really high standards um, early on, because I don't want to say pre-war, it was pre, pre the war with America, when they were still fighting in, in China, um, for their um, naval air arm, their carrier pilots. And there were a lot of Japanese naval, even fighter pilots, that weren't classified as carrier pilots. Because remember, Japan had um, a naval, you know, a, a bunch of fighters that even weren't even um, capable of, na of aircraft landing. And those were sort of their second rank pilots. Well, they, when they had this wonder, you know, the air arm that attacks Pearl Harbor, instead of before Pearl Harbor, largely taking, you know, I don't know, two thirds of the pilots away from the carriers and turn them into trainers and other squadron commanders and other things like that, they kept them there. And so once they were destroyed, there wasn't the ability just to replace them and i say that very very much there wasn't the ability not um that it would take a while because at least as my viewing from what um uh, so that one is that and this one is okay good uh why is one attached to one province and the other one i don't know um is because um the, the institutional knowledge, so much of it is lost. Not every single one died, not that um, none of them had been transferred to s some other duty after Pearl Harbor, some of them had, but they didn't have enough of them to effectively um, train up more in a um, any sort of timely sense, because they just lost that institutional knowledge. And so, so the, they've already lost Iwo Jima. Yeah, well, they've retaken this. They had lost that, I remember, Japan. And they've lost an Antwok or whatever. Um, and here, Mili. So, um, you know, they didn't have that um, really functional ability at the time. Now, they could rebuild it over time if they're given the time. And that's not just calendar days. It's... Um, be able to have pilots who go up and fight the enemy and come home and then go fight the enemy and then come home and then go fight the enemy and come home a few times and learn do that enough and then you know but the americans weren't of course letting them because they're coming to fight the enemy and the americans are trying to are shooting them down so um you you have this situation that um they don't have the combat time, say, to fighting an inferior air force to them, but you still learn in doing so, like fighting the Chinese air force and getting good at that. And so Japan blows its its um its opportunity to. Okay, you're going there, so you come here to do that and. How, as a um, mod designer, do you want to do this? Ask the player, do you want to make the mistake that Japan did in World War II? Mm, you know, oh no, I don't want to make that mistake. Of course. So, um... You know, that, that's just sort of like a, of course you don't want to make it, but I think Django to some degree has 
sort of prompted me and helped me out to thinking about this a bit. Um, talking about Panzer Lair that we talked about a while ago and how they um, stripped a lot of their trainers out of the schools. And again, I can see good and bad coming from that. And it depends on how it's handled. Um, but as sort of a, an effect to have an event form Panzer Lair and then you get this really cool division with some um, un unique type units in it not just um, a you know another division in, in Hearts of Iron 4 which is much quicker and easier to do than it is here because this is both training a unit as well as producing an equipment that isn't like getting free equipment it's sort of having a um, special battalion of panzers or you know type in within it and a special battalion uh, type special battalion type of panzer grenadiers or whatever that's just you know i don't know five ten percent better than the standard for in some traits and some you know capabilities form that but you lower training standards or you know some other effect or whatever so you have this choice do you want to maintain your training effect or your whatever for for all of your forces or do you want to form this special unit and you sort of have this you know choice not necessarily one that will gut the you know the german panzer corps as it were you know but something that will we need more supplies Okay, um, you need more supplies, but you have almost enough now. And so you're going to support that attack. Attack, okay, we've won. There, they're coming in to... Hopefully they'll maintain enough supply. Okay, when can they... Operate 33 hours. 35 hours. down here yes air supply down into there oh good you guys are there so okay these guys can come down into here now they look like they're pushing into there good I don't want to straight jacket players into this oh lots of stuff okay um, into things but then I don't want to just always be want superpowers yes or no hit you know yes hit button A no hit button B kind of thing and because it's just you know who's not gonna do that okay yes Panzer Division Hermann Goering, the division was to be designated Panzer Division Hermann Goering by mid-June. The new division was ready for combat and was shipped to Sicily to defend against expected allied unit you know, will appear in Berlin. Okay, so we're removing um, some elements plus chances of a KG shooting um, activated. Probably the smaller the percentile chance. The um, better the unit will be your bigger or something or whatever. So, but yeah, we'll do that. And, um, upgrade Gross Deutschland to an army corps. Upgrade, okay, so we're losing a bunch of those units. That unit, okay, sounds good. 
Uh, the 60th Panzer Grenadier Division failed Harrenhal. Right around this time, I believe it was, um, Victor Lutz dies in an automobile accident. He's the um, sort of high-ranking SA guy that sort of stooges with Hitler and helps um, eliminate Rome and some of the others. So he's very much of a yes man. Um, and I also think he is, to be fair to him to some degree, not that he doesn't have any will of his own or anything, but he knows that if he were to, shall we say, throw his political weight around, he wasn't fat like Goering, or I mean, well, wasn't fat like Goering, yeah, but also wasn't fat or somewhat fat like um, Ernst Rome either. But throw his weight around, if he were to sort of do that, then he might still look like a danger um, to Hitler. And, well, uh, again, I, I'm not going to say it was a self... I don't know whether it would be a self-preservation situation in which, oh, well, if I look like I'm a danger, I might be killed, like um, Rome was killed. That may be part of it, but it's also part of, for the long-term preservation of the SA, that if it's looking like it's to be continuing danger, at one, one end it may be disbanded, at the other end it just simply won't get much in the way of resources. So... Um, I think we won't continue to pursue that. Let's come this way. Um, let the Italians or these guys occupy some other place up here. Um, but um, what Shepman, I think, um, once I think that's who it who it is, takes over once he's dead, and he really works to reinvigorate the SA. And by that point in the war, very much there wasn't going to be SA combat units but what they really worked is to find and promote some army units that already had relatively high um, SA manpower you know men in it um, and attach SA-ness to it um, if you will and that's what the field Harrenhala is sort of all about and that's part of the project to revitalize if you will Yes, a. Oh, that's a bad graphic. Um, and this is and um, this is um, from GGA, I believe. And bad text, obviously. But yep, yeah, okay. And Windhound, yeah, we're just. I'm hoping none of these are like sitting in India or in Iran, ready to go to India. I'm counting on them for my order of battle. Now this one, um. Think his, but I'll probably do it anyway since I've already clicked on it. Think it's no, not them, obviously. Um, think it's these guys. Um, 18th, yes. Okay, well, oh well. Um, there we go. Now we <laughs> just back to having a won't find a new home for you. Battle commander there. Well, it reduces our supply problem. And creates a lot more divisions. Okay, so we got this Kampf group. Deutschland, Hermann Goering. Okay, so just that. Probably the smaller of the 70%. It doesn't have much in the way of Brandenburg. Okay. Hope that didn't also take away all my... Um, Brandenburger... Um, no, we saw these regiments good. I hope they'll stay. Um, let's move all these to the top. You know, the other things like fighters and transport aircrafts and whatever are all important, but I want to get these units done. Reinforcements, big time, okay. And we have Hitler Jugend. Excellent. Now, which? Discross Deutschland headquarters. Okay. 
Um, I don't think that can be put through the production queue. So let's move it this way for once we get the stuff out of the production queue. Yeah, we might as well move it over here. I know a few of you have one or two um, sort of encouraging me to let a successful ally landing happen and then try to defeat it. Um, I don't know. My my inclination is no, is just to try to defend the coast from from the invasion and that but we will see i just i don't know my inclination my inclination is no but i'm still a bit unsure okay you can support the attack and that way it won't be coming all across the river oh okay we've taken out a destroyer but they took out and you go home as soon as you can. Hopefully you can dodge their pursuit of you. Okay. Um, yeah, head back down here. Hopefully you'll make it. Let's take a look. Um, where is the, how are you over here now? Where's the ones who are supposed to be there? Are you hanging out in Spain? Getting, ah, uh, okay. So they got a little damage and then went to Spain. Okay, no problem. Just checking. You guys, um, yeah, come over to here, and then we can base you further out into the Atlantic, I think. Okay, Reserve Corps, yeah, Coastal Submarine classes have advanced. Very good, um, I just haven't needed long-range submarines, and they're real expensive to build, because we just seem to be able to get bases somewhere enough. Streamlined hull. Let's do this. And no. Okay, how are my organization levels? Not so good. Um, yeah, let's... Oh, we don't want caps lock on. Well, we can capitalize that, cool. planned on it necessarily ending right here but pausing to talk as much as I have I think is what sort of done this so we're gonna wait wait this out mm -hmm. and if you notice that last event for the headquarters didn't have a image and I was wondering whether it was and I think it's I got to learn a little better to, to try it out. A reload interface and learning from Benjamin Magnus. Um, watch a little bit of his stuff. I do. Um, when you s stop having that, and I think that is a symptom of this. I was wondering just whether because there's so many of those HQ events, whether for some reason it just didn't have any uh, um, event image, which is possible. As we saw, the one that had that sort of squished up proportion one just uh, something with the file type didn't work right when it was done and on the other hand there we go um, 
and the text was bad. So yeah, sometimes there's just um, minor problems and it could be that there is an event image, could be there is an event image, and it's be and it's pointing to slightly you know spelling error yeah it, it, in either one you know well they don't line up i mean it could be that or it could be um need to reload the interface or something like that so i'm just going to restart this so that means this episode's over i hope you've enjoyed watching me play and listen to me talk on about things and so if you haven't already please um subscribe to the channel um post questions comments suggestions ideas I love hearing from you. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.